Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at some of the more advanced options of how you can use the tissue add-on. So I wanted to try something a bit new today, so I'm going to work on an overall project which is making a scene where you've got some water with raindrops splashing into it. And to do that we're going to use some of the advanced options in the tissue add-on. Now there are probably other ways that you could do this, so this isn't the only option, but this was a nice little scene to allow me to show you some of these more advanced options. Now this is going to make this project a little bit weird because normally you'd set everything up to begin with, whereas I'm going to set this up as I go and talk through problems and then talk about how you use the tissue modifier at each stage. The reason I'm doing it that way is it allows me to section this into different chapters and that makes it easier for people watching to find the bit that they're interested in if they're not interested in all of it. So I'm just going to set this up starting out with making a ripple that's going to be where one of these raindrops has fallen. And I'm just using loop tools to set this up, but importantly I've made sure that there's a certain amount of vertices on the outside, and I did that by using a subdivision surface modifier, just so I knew the exact number, and that's going to become relevant later when we start using the tissue modifier. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to make my general scene, which is where this is going to go. So let's bring this off to the side, let's scale that up a lot, let's go with somewhere there. It could be actually bigger than this, but we'll just deal with that for now maybe actually a little bit smaller. I'm going to apply the scale and then I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to control and E to subdivide this. And I just want to subdivide this to the point where it's approximately the same size. Doesn't really make too much difference because the tissue modifier will automatically sort that out. Let's go with somewhere about there. And then in object mode, I'm going to add the same amount of subdivisions that I did on this object for where my ripple is. So I'm going to subdivide this and I'm going to put that up to four. And importantly, I'm going to sort out these corners just by going to advanced and boundary, keep corners. Now, importantly, I can't apply this for what I'm going to do later. So that's really key. And then I'm going to add in a displacement modifier to make these waves. Let's sort out a new texture, come to the texture panel, which is down here. Or you could have clicked on that button. I'm going to use clouds, which is what I tend to use for waves. Let's put this scale up to like five. We'll have a look at how that looks. Back to the modifier, up the strength a little bit. That might be a bit off on the scale. Let's try that on 10 for the size. And yeah, that looks like a better sort of set of waves. Maybe let's up the strength a little bit. So there we go. We've just got this sort of wavy ocean going on here. So let's start with the basics. We're going to use our tissue modifier to tessellate this. So select the object that we want to use for our tessellations, shift select the object we want it to be tessellated onto, and then we're going to go to tissue and then tessellate. We're going to want to use a patch technique to keep up with the subdivision surface, and we want our points to be merged. You can see this in the first video on tissue. There's a link in the description if you want to have a look at that. Click OK, and then we'll get this tessellating. Let's G and X that to the side so we can see it. And remember, we've still got our original there so we can change things around and we've got our ripples. Now, first thing, this looks absolutely shocking. Obviously, we're going to subdivide this again at some point to make sure that this is really clear and everything gets smoothed out, but this does not look like realistic raindrops. Now, the first thing we can do, and I did this intentionally by putting the raindrop off to one side, is we can make things look a little bit better by moving the raindrops around. So I'm going to come to my object data properties, come all the way down to my tissue tessellate options, and then I'm going to go down to rotation and I'm going to click the rotation as being random. So this now starts off with it looking a little bit better because I offset that on my original version and now they're sort of all over the place. So it looks a little bit better. Still not perfect, but definitely better. Now we probably don't want this many raindrops. So this is going to be the next bit that we're going to look at we're going to start saying, well, actually, we don't want raindrops everywhere, and actually we want a bigger variety of raindrops and splashes. So how are we going to do that? Well, the easiest way is to do this with materials. And if we come to our tessellation option here, we have a component mode and we've got materials as an option. So let's have a look how this works. So the first thing is we're going to need additional raindrops. So I'm just going to speed through this, but importantly, I'm making a plane keeping it subdivided to the same amount and then applying it. And then I'm going to make two other raindrops of various different sizes and how much they're sort of splashing at this point. Now to make this work, we need to have these with very specific names. I mean, they can be whatever names you want, but you need to remember what they are. So I'm just going to name this splash zero because there's no splash in that one and then splash one, two and three. And the final thing we need to do is set up some materials. So this is going to work. Now, you can do this entirely on the object that you're going to be using, 
I actually like to set these up in advance and it allows me to see what I'm doing and basically gives me a reminder if I'm going to come back to the file. But as I said, you really don't need to do this. You could just do this as you go through, but this is the way that I like to do it. You could also do this on exactly the same objects with the splashes to help you. But again, I prefer having this set up differently just to make things really visible in case I want to change things. So for this, I'm gonna go into my viewport shading and then we're gonna come here and start adding some materials. So we come down to the material tab, I'm gonna click plus for new and we're gonna call this splash zero. And importantly, you must give these exactly the same names as the objects that you want to tessellate. And then to make it nice and easy to see, for the other ones, let's call this splash one, I'm gonna change the color so I know what I'm dealing with and it's really easy and visible to see. So I've now got materials of splash zero, splash one, splash two, and splash three that correspond or have the same names as our tessellating objects. What this is gonna allow me to do if I go into face mode is start setting up some of these splashes to be in certain places. So what I need to do, because I've got my splash zero being what I want generally, I don't want ripples everywhere. I'm gonna to come to this object, new, and I'm just gonna make splash zero as my material for generally the most of the object. Then I'm gonna go into face mode and I'm gonna select some random ones. Let's go with there. And then I'm going to add a new material slot to this object and assign that as splash one. Click assign and now we've got those. To be fair, this probably looks a little bit rubbish. I'll deal with that in a second. Let's put another one here. Let's go splash one and assign that as well. So you can add more to this. The other way you could do this is you can go to select and then select random. That's way too many. I'm gonna bring my ratio way down to somewhere like there. So that gives us a nice start. And then I can start unselecting if there are too many near each other. And then let's get rid of that, that, that. And we'll want that one a different color as well. Let's put that there and do something like there. But the random gives a nice start. Then I'm gonna plus, change that to splash two, click assign, and we've got our splash twos assigned. And then let's just fill in some bits that seem to be missing something. So let's go with something like that, plus, and we'll assign that with splash three, make sure you click assign. So it's really easy to visibly see that you've done this and where everything's going. And while we've got a few of the splash twos, the red ones in the center, the randomized locations should make that fine. So we come over to our tessellation object. I'm actually gonna come back to my standard matte cap view, but we know that that's there. You can always come back and look at it. And we're gonna to come to our tessellation, so object data properties. We've got our tissue tessellate options, and then I'm gonna change my component mode from object, where it can only have one, to materials. Now you'll notice that I've got this slightly weird offset here. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why that happens. It's gotta be something to do with the origins, and I know that because of the way that it's solved. But if I come here and have a look, you can see the object origins are exactly on where everything is. I think it's because I've got this going slightly further down, and then it basically isn't working perfectly off the origin. And you can see this one's going further down there as well. So. I think that actually what happens within this is that the origin works at the center, but it looks off the lowest point. So that's causing this issue here where you've got this offset and you get some slightly smaller offsets. Now we can fix this if I just come down here to align to origins. If you click that, it will then fix that issue. So problem, no problem and everything's lined up nicely. So that's how to fix that. It's a really common problem. I got really baffled by it and couldn't find anyone solving it. I think, as I said, it's because this works off of size and how far things are away from the origin and we'll treat that as the bottom. So just by the way I created this, it causes that issue. So anyway, it's an easy one to solve and we've got that solved. So there we go, we've got my raindrops and they're on the sea. Cool, really happy with this. And I can always come in after this tessellation, notice that this tessellation doesn't have any modifiers on it at all, whereas the other object does. I can come in here and press something like Control and two to smooth out my raindrops and suddenly everything and the splashes look way nicer. We will have this issue with these corners. So again, I'll just fix that to keep the corners. So great, I've got my little raindrops. Now let's make this a little bit cooler. 
I want my raindrops to actually have that sort of splash and impact. At the moment, this looks a bit like it's got measles. I'm not saying this is the best way to make raindrops anyway, but what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here and go to vertex mode, and I'm going to select these middle vertices that I put there, and then I'm just going to G and then Z that up, so I've now got sort of the splash point where it's sort of coming in and hitting. And let's do the same for this one as well. So notice that I've got a very specific center point. Let's G and Z that up. So we've now got our splashes. And if I come here, we can then come to my object data properties and then refresh this and we'll get our splash points in as well. So you can change things and add it in later. Except this looks rubbish and I mean, at a glance, it's not too bad, but because this has been modified by the direction of the normals, and this is working off of something that's got a curve to it, suddenly our raindrops are all hitting from really different angles. And while you sometimes get the rain going, well, all in one angle, it's raining sideways. you don't have it that random. So we're gonna have to come up with a different solution to this, and this is actually relatively easily solved. So what I'm going to do is just undo all of this and we're going to have a look at how we solve this. And this is not done with tissue, but because tissue makes multiple versions of these, we can use that to help us. So what I'm going to do is go into vertex mode and I'm going to select that center vertex and I'm going to go to my object data properties and I'm going to create a vertex group just for that center point, which I want to use as the splash. So plus, and I'm going to call this drop and then assign it. Always deselect and then select, check that it's working, and it is. And then I'm going to come over to this one here, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And importantly, I'm going to also call this drop. So they've both got the same name. Assign it, deselect, select, yes, it's working. Right, let's refresh this tessellation. So this has now been refreshed, and if I go into vertex mode, where we've got all of these, I can go to my geometry. This always seems to make an extra drop, but if you still click on the first drop, oh, let's deselect everything and click select, you'll notice that we've selected all of those center points that we want. That one doesn't have one because it's the flat one. This one does. So all of them are now selected because they are all called drop. So why is that helpful? Well, if I shift A, and bring in an empty, let's bring in a plane axis, I'm just gonna scale that up, and then let's alternate to bring that over just so it's nearby. So we've got our empty now, and this empty is gonna be used for our initial impacts. I'm just gonna F2 and name this impact empty. Come to our object, so our tessellated object, add modifier, we're going to use a hook modifier, and then we're going to be using as our object that impact empty, and for our vertex group, we're going to click drop one. And then I can now select this G and then Z, and it's going to bring up all of my splashes, all of my little points. We only want it a little bit, so let's go to about there. And what's cool about this is they are all horizontal. So suddenly this one, you've got your raindrop coming in, hitting, but then it's making the splash at the right angle. So this works really nicely if you want these. What I really want to find out a way of doing is randomizing this strength so that they're not all the same length. I mean, I could do these as different numbers and I could come in individually and change this, but there must be a way to do that. I'm thinking maybe with a geometry node, but we'll see. But either way, we have now got our sea scene or our water with these raindrops coming in and splashing on the surface. Now, obviously you can make this vastly better. You could come in here change some of our vertices around so we could always start moving these and so let's take those move those a little bit out and so on so you can always just come and add some more modifications in as you choose you do not need to do this all in one go because of the way the tessellations work so this works very nicely non-destructively it gets you all of the things that you'd normally be able to do with modifiers but with a lot more options and with that combination of being able to randomize but also being able to specifically select things yourself it's a really nice mix of both worlds compared to doing things procedurally hopefully this nicely shows some of the more advanced things you can do with the tissue tessellate function and gives you some ideas of how you can use this in your designs have a great day guys